Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about special case of a continuous random variable, our normal distribution. All right, so our normal distribution is probably the most important distribution in all of statistics. We find that a lot of things go back to the normal, converge to the normal. We'll be using this a ton in the future. Okay, so the normal distribution is that classic bell curve that you're you're familiar with bell-shaped unimodal symmetric curve right? and it's defined by its parameters mu and sigma its mean and standard deviation right typically it's denoted like this now some places you may see also denote it with its variance rather than the standard deviation okay so just look out for that no make sure you know if you're working with the variance or standard deviation Okay, the PDF of our normal distribution looks like this, and the graph of our normal distribution looks like this. Okay, so we see that it's centered at mu, right? and the standard deviation tells us how spread out that distribution is. All right, but remember, there's a there's a finite area under this curve equal to one. Right, so the more spread out something is, I'm gonna have to squish it down a little bit. The smaller that standard deviation is, your normal distribution will be taller and skinny. Okay, let's take a look at this PDF for a minute. All right, now, even for the more mathematically inclined, right, this, this PDF is kind of a lot to deal with. Okay, so we already said that the normal distribution is very widely used, but the problem is it has a very messy PDF. Okay, so we have methods for kind of working around this, which we'll see. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about how the normal works. Now here are three different normal distributions. They have the same mean, different standard deviations. Okay, so what color distribution here has the smallest standard deviation? Well, that's the blue. Right? This purple color, this purple color here would have the largest standard deviation. Okay, here are three curves with the same standard deviation but different mu's. Okay, so we see mu shifts it along the x-axis. Sigma tells us how spread out or how maybe squished down the distribution is. Okay, so some other properties. We know it's symmetric around the mean. That means our mean is equal to our median and, and probably equal to our mode as well. Okay, it does have what we would call inflection points at plus or minus one standard deviation right so what that means is the curve looks like this it's concave down when we get to one standard deviation it, that's where it turns concave up right? we know the total area is equal to one and actually so even though most of the pictures that we've been showing you look like this kind of a cut section of the distribution it actually goes on and on forever in either direction so it goes on and on forever to negative infinity and positive infinity all right, we'll talk about why we usually just only use a cut section of that in a minute. Okay, so how do we find normal distribution probabilities? Well, our empirical rule is, is always a good place to start. Okay, so for the normal distribution, or really for any symmetric bell-shaped unimodal curve, we can say that 68% of our observations are within one standard deviation, 95% are within two, and pretty much all, or 99.7%, should be within three standard deviations. So, in words, we can, we can define it that way, but I think it makes a lot more sense when we see it visual. Okay, so this is our empirical rule visual. Now, this can help us find some probabilities, right? Like if we want to know, okay, what's the probability of being a certain number of standard deviations away from the mean or, or something like that. Um, but the question is, so what, what happens if, you know, I fall somewhere between standard deviations? The empirical rule can give us a ballpark estimate of those probabilities, but how do we do that? Some ways we can find normal probabilities, well, we can just use math. Um, we're going to have to use some kind of complicated math, though, if we want to do this. Because remember, we mentioned the PDF is kind of a lot to deal with. Well, you can integrate this PDF using polar coordinates or this identity here called the, the Gaussian integral. Remember the, the normal distribution is actually called the Gaussian distribution as well. 
Um, but most of the time, we don't want to do that, right? That's that's a lot. Okay, so the, the classic way of finding these things is this process called standardizing and using your z-table. And of course, we always have technology. There's, there's tons of different normal distribution calculators out there. For now, we're going to focus on this. If we want to find the probability of falling somewhere on that curve, the first thing we need to know is where does our observation that we're interested in fall with respect to the rest of the distribution. So we've seen before that we can really only compare standard deviation when means are similar, right? But one thing we can do is we can put things in units of standard deviation, right? And then we can compare things from different distributions, right? And we can do that with z-scores, right? So we've seen z-scores before. So imagine the, the simplest normal distribution you can think of, right, with the mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. So it turns out that z-scores can follow this standard normal distribution, okay? So rather than having to deal with the math every time, right, the idea is if we can convert, we got all these different normal distributions out there, and if we can convert it to the standard normal distribution and only deal with it, that should make it a whole lot easier. Okay, because we have a table, our Z table dealing with the standard normal distribution that has pretty much all the associated probabilities that we could ever need. Okay, the first thing to note about our Z table is that it gives us the CDF value. Okay, in other words, it gives us the probability of a z-score being less than some number. Okay, so if I ever am trying to solve a normal distribution problem and it's a less than problem, all I have to do is find a z-score and pull that value off the table. Okay, so what do we do for a greater than problem then? If we can just grab our probability off the table for a less than problem. Well, we know that we can just use the complement rule. Okay, so if I want to know the probability of z being greater than some number, all I got to do is take 1 minus the probability of it being less than, in other words, 1 minus the table value. Okay, so less than is easy, just grab the table value. Greater than, I take 1 minus whatever's on my table, right? 1 minus my CDF value. Now the trickier part is what about these in-between probabilities? What about something like this? Probability of being between two numbers. Okay, the table gives us the area to the left, right? It gives us our CDF value. So now there are other ways of kind of working around this and, and doing this, but just because of the way the table's set up, what we typically do is we find that larger area, so in other words, the area Z2, right? Then we find the smaller area, the area associated with Z1, and we subtract it from the larger area. So if I take that larger area minus the smaller area, it should leave me with what's left in between. Okay, so we'll see examples of each of these types of problems going forward. Okay, so we know how to find these for z-scores, but unfortunately there's not a whole lot of things, just z-scores floating around out there in the universe. Okay, but there are a lot of different normal distributions out there. Okay, so the idea is we take all these different normal distributions, we convert or we standardize them using a z-score, and that's our standardizing process. All right, so if we want to visualize this process, I take a value of x, right, I convert it to a z-score, and then I use my table to find a probability. Finding any kind of normal probability, here's kind of the steps that I think it's good to follow. Right? Always draw a picture first, and really with any continuous distribution. It's such an important thing to get down and then shade the area that you're looking for. All right? Then use that empirical rule to kind of ballpark your answer. Right? Then find your z-score, find the probability, and then at that point use technology. Now a lot of times people want to just jump straight to the technology Right? But it's easy to get that wrong if, number one, I don't draw a picture. And number two, when you're, when you're first learning this stuff, I think it's useful to know exactly what's going on behind the scenes of that technology.
Okay, so we've got a multiple different ways of finding these probabilities. So use all of them to kind of check each other and make sure everything works out. Okay, another thing that we want to talk about with the normal distribution is finding quantiles. All right, so before we, when we're going through our standardizing process, we found a value of x, we converted it to a z-score to then find a probability. All right, but what if we're instead given a probability or a percentile, right? And we want to find, work backwards to then find a value of x. Well, this is called unstandardizing or finding a quantile. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we have to, if, if the table was the last place we went when standardizing, well, then we have to start in the table and then we can rearrange our z-score formula, right? So start in the table to find my z-score first. Then from there, I should have a standard deviation. I should have a mean and solve for x. Okay, so these are, this is the basic process. Um, the standardizing process is going to be very, very important, working with our normal distribution. So we'll see some examples of this in a little bit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see.